All right, welcome to 2-2 uh, in our text. We're doing linear functions. It's a short little uh, video and it deals with uh, topics that you've really covered uh, before and even have reviewed as recently as our summer work. So uh, start off with a basic definition um, of a linear function and also just review our objective which is to apply uh, linear functions to model real-world situations and we'll get to one in a minute but the basic concept behind a linear function is that it fits into that y equals mx plus b formula that we know so well only it's not y now it's f of x it's function notation just remember that our slope is always going to be the change in y over the change in x or the rise over the run okay you should know that like the back of your hand and then our b is of course our vertical intercept and where that line crosses the um, y-axis axis uh, okay so vertical intercept uh, we're gonna look at example 21 on page 82 and we'll solve that in a minute okay we're gonna look at number 21 here on page 82 it's a cute little problem that deals with a uh, snowy tree cricket and the little guy will chirp faster if it gets warmer so uh, it's a linear relationship and you can basically tell the temperature by counting the number of chirps per minute and I'm gonna take you through this problem if you look read carefully in the book maybe take and down um, the data points but at 68 degrees it uh, chirps 116 times at 80 degrees a cricket will chirp 164 times per minute okay okay uh, here is what problem 21 looks like. Um, I've written out the data points you can find in the book. Uh, at 68 degrees, we get 116 chirps. At 80 degrees, we get 164. I think that's pretty close to the real world. Um, we've got an equation that we're looking to write. Uh, I've got chirps based on temperature is going to be equal to mt plus b. So here's our slope. That's our variable temperature, and that's our intercept. We find the slope first by simply asking what is the change in y and then the change in x. It's rise over run. So the change from 116 up to 164 you can subtract. Uh, it's increasing by 48. The change in the um, inputs or my x variable or in this case my temperatures is going from 68 to 80 that's a change in 12 degrees I simplify this down to a nice round four chirps per minute alright but uh, don't let the units fool you we're just gonna deal with four as a pure number there and so I now know that my M is gonna be four I can then substitute in the uh, temperature and the chirps into this equation to solve for B so I guess I can use that first point it doesn't matter either one but I'll put in 116 is equal to 4 times 68 plus B and if I do the math uh, 4 times 70 would be 280 but it's uh, 2 fours or 8 less than that so it's gonna be 272 plus B is equal to 116 and when I subtract 272 from both sides, I solve for B, and B is going to be negative 156. Okay? So now my equation then will be the chirps based on the temperature is equal to 4t minus 156. Okay? So that's the equation. They want us to evaluate that equation at 90. So C of 90 is going to be equal to 4 times 90 minus 156. That's going to be equal to 360 minus 156, which is going to be equal to uh, 154. So that would be the number of chirps that you'd expect. Um, oops, 204. Excuse me, I'm jumping the gun. 204 chirps per minute. Okay, then they want you to find the domain and the range. Well, if you, range, well, if you read in the book, uh, they're telling you that um, crickets are really only active from 39 degrees to 105 degrees. Well, the temperature, that's your input, that's your independent variable so I just simply write 39 degrees to 105 
and then I'm going to plug each of those values into my function and see what the resulting chirps allowed is. So I can just quickly do this on the calculator. So I take and do 39 times 4 and I subtract 100 and whoops 156 and I get zero chirps. That's interesting. They stop chirping. And then I'll put in um, 4 times 105 for that temperature and then I'll subtract 156 again and I get 264 chirps. So they go from nothing to pretty darn fast and that'll be the range. Okay. So a rather straightforward problem. Uh, I'd like you to read the book. Uh, read all the way up through um, problem 22 and we'll be working on these in class. Thanks a lot.